let's explore a very powerful Flexi Capture feature called Data Types. Data Types can ensure that field level OCR recognition quality consistently surpasses full page OCR quality. We'll explore this topic and dive into which data types are available for various capture fields. Let's go ahead and click on Properties and we'll see the Data tab. And you can select a data type that aligns with the projected data format of targeted fields. There are around 80 out of the box data types categorized into eight groups. Here are those eight groups, and they include address, amount of money, code, date, name, number, text, and time. The default data type for all fields is the text data type, which essentially strives to match any ASCII character. Thus, it includes letters, digits, punctuation marks, symbols, as well as a built-in dictionary. I'll mention also that if I have an address field, but I don't know what part of an address is going to be entered, I can just use the parent address category, not a subtype such as city, and FlexiCapture will do its best to recognize the data. So we can use the parent categories as well as the subtypes. Note the validation interface at the bottom of the data tab. Here additional format checks for data can be done, which impose strict and binding constraints on the data of a given field. So if we change this data type to text, and click on edit, you can see that we can specify what the maximum number of characters are. And then we can also specify that recognized data must align with a regular expression. And of course, such regular expressions can include wildcard characters. We can also limit allowed values to a list of strings. And the validation section changes based on which data type is selected. So as I mentioned, if text is selected, we can specify the maximum length of this string. But if we select a date data type, then we'll be asked whether there's an allowed date range. So it's, a, it's very powerful that these two dialogues are linked. If we select a currency data type, the validation dialog allows us to specify minimum and maximum currency values. These constraints catch errors. For a text data type, we can click Content Constraints and select Use an external source of allowed values. By doing so, we could either type in allowed values or bring them in via a file or connect to a database. By doing so, what we're saying is that the data that's found in that field must conform with the data that's provided via a database link or typed in value. And FlexiCapture provides the verification operators with a drop down list so they can actually choose from that pick list and get the right data. For a number data type, there's a variety of possible formats that you can select from. Or you can create your own custom data type based on selections from an alphabet. You can additionally specify a regular expression. As well, you can bring in data from a dictionary or key in data. A custom data type could be restricted to just numbers, say, 0 through 9. And we could name this custom setting 0 through 9. We've learned that the topmost edit button and the bottommost edit button are linked. If I specify a date, I can then constrain the possible choices to conform to a date range. If I select currency on the bottommost edit button, I can specify a currency range. And if the values fall outside of that range, then that field is marked for mandatory verification. I've stressed this because of its importance. 
Between these two edit buttons, there's an autocorrect interface, and this is also extremely powerful. For instance, we can replace characters, and oftentimes when we're capturing data, a field may have a title that includes a dash or a colon at the end, which might be inadvertently captured. So we could replace such characters with nothing from the prefix of this string. We could also execute a trim function by replacing all space characters with nothing from both the prefix and the suffix of the field's data. This is a really powerful function, and you don't need to write any code to get this done. You can also replace text strings. So if I'm seeing miss and misses, for instance, I could replace miss with ms, and I could similarly replace mrs with ms and thereby easily execute data normalization. Also note that you can change capitalization right there. So this is very important when you're capturing handwriting. FlexiCapture does a great job of detecting whether characters are lowercase or uppercase when it's machine print. But when it's hand print, FlexiCapture is less able to discern the difference between a lowercase o and an uppercase o, or a lowercase c and an uppercase c. So in this case, it's a best practice to change the capitalization to all uppercase or first upper, and once again, your data will be normalized and exported in a clean manner. We can also remove excess spaces, so that means that if we find three spaces between a first name and a last name, we'll reduce that to just one space. OCR algorithms do a great job of finding characters and al aligning them with their ASCII values, but it has a harder time calculating how many spaces are between characters. So the remove excess spaces function will clean up and again normalize your data. Additionally, here you can also add a script to clean up your data, allowing more complex cleanup and normalization routines.